Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless. Thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this, and we really do hope you learned something by the end of this video. Well, for this video, you can look at it as part two of our previous video where we shared with you what the devil answered when Father Gabriel Amorth asked him, did you create hell? The late Father Amorth, which the movie The Pope's Exorcist did a really bad job at portraying him and telling his stories. I am the chief exorcist of the Vatican. My position was appointed by the Pope. Once shared one of the most recurring questions, and in his opinion, the most amusing. How does the devil appear or what does he look like? Well, here's what Father Amorth said. He is a pure spirit. He does not have corporeal substance and therefore, he is not representative to us in a fully comprehensible form. It is the same for him as for the angels. If they wish to appear to men, they must assume characteristics accessible to us. The Bible is filled with visions of angels as men. In the book of Tobias, for example, the archangel Raphael accompanies the young Tobias on his mission by assuming the form of a youth. Returning to the appearance of the devil, one can say that, in his essence, he is much uglier than we can even vaguely imagine. His horrific appearance is a direct consequence of his distancing himself from God and of his explicit and irrevocable choice of rebellion. This we can infer from logical reasoning. If God is infinitely beautiful, whoever decides to distance himself from God must be the exact opposite. Naturally, this is only one type of theological augmentation that we find based on revelation and from the support of our natural reason when it is illuminated by faith. And if, stretching the discourse, we wished somehow to give the demon an image by setting aside the figures derived from traditional depictions of the devil with horns, a tail, the wings of a bat, talons, and inflamed eyes. Being a pure spirit, evidently he cannot embody these characteristics. If these images can help us to fear his actions toward us, and we have good reason to then we should welcome them. On the other hand, we risk making the devil appear like an ancient relic, a frill of times past, and the stuff of simpletons. There is a great danger in over-relying on these images, and they can be of service to the devil. The devil, being very shrewd, can also assume innocuous forms. The case of Saint Padre Pio is exemplary. At times the devil showed himself to him as a ferocious dog, at other times as Jesus or as Our Lady, at still other times as his confessor or as the father guardian of his convent, who commanded him to do something. But after verifying the order he received with his superior, he understood that he had had a vision of the devil. There were even a few times when the devil appeared as a beautiful naked girl. And finally, the demon could present himself with unpleasant odors, such as sulfur or animal excrement, and this happens at times when one is blessing a house, or to persons particularly sensitive, with odious noises, such as a clearly perceived rustling of the wind, or harassing tactile sensations. Father Amorth also shared the use of sacramentals and exorcisms, which I think you'll find interesting, or at least I hope so, because I recall a few comments asking about that. So if you could give me a little bit more of your time, let me share what Father Amorth said. Some sacramentals, such as the imposition of hands and blessed oil and salt, have always been used during exorcisms, unlike blessed water, which entered into use more recently. It is important to emphasize that these three sacramentals act like all sacramentals, according to the power of faith. But bear in mind that sacramentals are efficacious solely if used for and with faith. For this reason, it is important that the faithful know how to use the sacramentals correctly. It makes no sense to keep large quantities of blessed water, salt, and blessed oil if one does not have faith. Each sacramental has its own characteristics. The prayer in Latin clarifies their meaning. These three sacramentals are used to liberate us from the influence of the demon. The blessed salt, for example, gives special protection to places. Father Candido, Father Amorph's mentor, recommended putting a little bit of blessed salt in a room that is considered infested. The blessed oil has the power to cure ills and chase demons. During an exorcism, Father Amorph would use the first ritual, which includes the possibility of anointing the possessed with oil. He would anoint the five senses, the forehead, eyes, nostrils, throat, mouth, and ears, tracing on the possessed the sign of the cross. And again, this must be done with faith in order to be effective. Blessed water is used for blessing places and persons. One can also drink blessed water, but with faith, taking little sips. 
Some of the principal effects are liberation from the snares of the evil one and protection from him. Well, that is all for this video. Again, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, and if it isn't too much of a hassle, please do share this video on your Facebook and Twitter to help spread the message. We do upload daily, and we really appreciate the support we have received for all our channels. Until next time, much love to all and peace be with you. I'm in RCIA. I'm, I'm scheduled to be confirmed uh, in, uh, in seven months, uh, and I hope Bishop Barron uh, comes down to confirm me, but we'll see. I'm, I'm in RCIA right now. I, once a week I get on the horn with father Bobby and we, we talk shop.